Okay, let's talk about sums and products of series. Um, sums and products uh, work fairly well. Um, sums work just like you would think they would. Products, we have to do a little bit of work to make them work out like we think they might. Um, so first what I want to do is I want to define what I mean by absolute convergence. So definition a series sum of a sub n converges absolutely if the sum of the absolute values of a sub n converge. Okay, so it's a little bit harder to do this because, well, each of the terms when you take their absolute value is bigger than the term when you maybe subtract some stuff, right? So uh, I definitely have a monotonic sequence when I take the absolute values, or sorry, uh, I have a monotonic sequence of partial sums when I take the absolute values, uh, so I need that to be bounded. And if I'm not subtracting off things that might be negative, I might not get that bound. Um, so let's uh, note this as well. If the sum of the a sub n's in absolute value converge, by the direct comparison test, or by the comparison test, we get that the sum of the a sub n's converge. So absolute value is pretty strong. Uh, absolute convergence is pretty strong. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily work the other way. right? For example, sort of maybe a non-example. The sum of negative 1 over n, negative 1 to the n over n from n equals 1 to infinity uh, converges, but the sum from n equals 1 to infinity 1 over n does not, so the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n does not converge absolutely. Okay, if this happens, we say that it converges conditionally. So let's get another definition here. If the sum of a sub n converges but the sum of the absolute values of a sub n diverge, we say the sum of the a sub n's converge conditionally. Let's write down some theorems about sums now. So uh, theorem, if the sum of a sub n equals a and the sum of b sub n equals b, I'm not telling you where I'm starting or ending, uh, it should be ending at infinity, but the starting point doesn't really matter. Uh, and c is a real number, then sort of two things happen. The sum of a sub n plus b sub n equals a plus b, just like you would expect. And two, the sum of c times a sub n is equal to c times a, just like you would expect. And uh, I'll let the proof be up to you, but it sort of 
uh, look at s sub n equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n or 0 to n uh, a sub n or a sub k as a sequence and t sub n equal sum from k equals 0 to n uh, b sub k as sequences and c uh, and use the the sum of sequences like this and the limit of c times s sub n equals c times the limit of s sub n uh, theorems from chapter 3, earlier on in chapter 3. Okay. With products of two series, we have to be a little bit more careful. And this is another thing that Cauchy has shown. So Cauchy did a lot of this stuff. But let's look at what it would mean to take the product of two series. So if we want to reasonably compute these two, this product, the sum of a sub n times the sum of b sub n, and I'll start at n equals 1, at 0, and go to infinity, equals 0, and go to infinity, we need to look at partial sums um, and so I want to look at the sum from n equals 0 to k a sub n times the sum n equals 0 to k b sub n which if I write this out, that's a sub 0 plus a sub 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub n times b sub 0 plus b sub 1 plus dot 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 plus b sub k. And there's a lot of cross terms if I was to multiply this out, right? This is not just equal to the sum from n equals 0 to k, a sub i uh, n b sub n, right? That's definitely not true because there's all these cross terms in there. Okay, so we can't do this. We have to do something else, and I actually have to compute this product in a reasonable way. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce kind of a dummy variable. I'm going to write it in here with an x, and we're going to have uh, x in there and then we'll evaluate it at 1 after I've done my polynomial multiplication. That's a k. And so that should be a k. Okay. So if I put that in there and evaluate it 1, then the product should still be the same. But this allows me to kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to take a sub 0 and call this the degree 0 part of this polynomial plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus dot 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 plus a sub this should be a k x to the k that should be a k uh, and then here I should have b sub 0 plus b sub 1 x to the first plus b sub 2x squared plus dot 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 and b sub k x to the k and now if I multiply these things as polynomials, it's going to help me keep track a little bit better of what I need to do for coefficients. So, as polynomials, the coefficient of degree 0 on the product is, well, to get a degree 0 thing, I have to multiply degree 0 times degree 0. So that's going to be b0 times a0. 
the degree 1 coefficient Well, that's going to be, I have to take degree 0 times degree 1, or degree 1 times degree 0. So I get a sub 0 times b sub 1 plus a sub 1 times b sub 0. Those are the only way to get degree 1 out of this polynomial multiplication. Degree 2 coefficient, I can take a0 and b2, or a1 and b1, or a2 and b0. If you kind of see the pattern here, the degree uh, k part is going to be a0 bk plus a1 b sub k minus 1 plus a2 b sub k minus 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub k minus 2 b2 plus a sub k minus 1 b1 plus a sub k b0 uh, which is equal to the sum uh, from i equals 0 to k a sub i, b sub k minus i. And so if I wanted that product, well I could get all the way up to a degree 2k, but this product is going to be sort of, as k gets really big, approximately this value for each of the k values. So we're going to set this thing equal to c sub k. And then we get that the sum of a sub k times the sum of b sub k should be, this isn't quite true yet, so this should be the sum of these c sub k's. All right, That's going to be kind of our estimate for what we should do with these partial sums. Um, the theorem is though that when I take these partial sums, these c sub k's, I start adding up a lot of terms here. right? And these c sub k's might get big, or they might not actually go to zero. Uh, and so that's kind of worrisome if I'm trying to deal with convergence. So our theorem about products makes sure that those c sub k's have to go to zero. And how it does it is it says that one of the two series that we're multiplying, either the a sub k's or the b sub k's, has to be absolutely convergent. If they're both conditionally convergent, all those minus signs floating around could interfere with uh, the convergence of the product. So the theorem, if, so one, the sum of a sub k equals a converges absolutely. Two, the sum of b sub k equals b just converges. Doesn't have to be conditionally or absolutely, just converges. Uh, 3, c sub k is equal to uh, n equals 1 to k, uh, 0. Maybe I should go from 0 to infinity on each of these, 0 to infinity on each of these. Uh, a sub n b sub k minus n and I think that's all I need let me check for sure yep then the sum of a sub k from 0 to infinity
like times the sum of b sub k from 0 to infinity is equal to the sum of c sub k from n equals 0 to infinity is equal to a times b. Okay. Uh, I don't want to prove this. The proof is rather technical because you've got to deal with uh, that absolute convergence and stuff, but this is our theorem for how products work and these partial products here are uh, kind of a nice way uh, to deal with how we conver uh, converge products of series.